Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be working on a brand new traveler's notebook using the explore more kit from feed your craft i am so excited to get to work on this album i have everything photo and journaling card wise printed and ready to go and then i'm also using a combination of the explore more kit so i've got the ephemera pieces some of the stamp sets the alphabet stickers and some of the add-ons as well so the shapes or puffy sticker shapes number three set and then a couple of the other uh, add-on stamps so i've got um local love and that's explore more and open road so between all of this stuff i'm hoping to put together an entire traveler's notebook 16 spreads in total i believe maybe 15 could be 15 plus a uh intro and outro page and um to show you how to do it. So um, this album is going to be one that I am creating to give as a gift to my parents, specifically to my mom for Mother's Day. And it's going to document a trip that they took back in 2019 to visit my uncle in Montana. So um, I also have the Montana state stamp from Studio Calico that I'm going to pull out for the title page. And then as a heads up, there won't be any journaling on any of the journaling pages. So like here's an example where I have one ready to go where all she needs to do is add her own journaling. I did that specifically because I was not on this trip. So um, they are not my memories to document. So I have just created the album and given my mom the space where she can add in her own journaling if and when she wishes to do that. So what we're going to do today, um, today we are going to, this is going to be the first of four videos. So every video I will go through four spreads in total until we get all the way to the 16. And then I will also take you over in each of the four videos to my desktop to show you how I created the elements for my traveler's notebook from the digital kit. So many of the cards I took and altered in order to get them into a traveler's notebook size. So I'll show you exactly how I did that. All right, so today we're going to jump into the first four spreads plus the title page of this album. I'm first going to take you over to my computer so I can show you the digital portion and then I'll meet you back here afterwards to start getting this album put together. All right, friends, so before we get into the actual physical putting together of the spreads for today, first I want to show you how I altered some of the digital elements to work inside of my traveler's notebook for this album. So let's start with the very first spread. For this one, I am going to be using the 3x4 card that says discovery consists not in seeking new lands, but in seeing with new eyes. For this one, I want to convert this into a traveler's notebook sized paper. So I'm going to open up a new canvas, uh, which you can go file new or control N. And I'm going to open up a four and a quarter by eight and a quarter at 300 pixels per inch page. So you can set those um, measurements in right over here, four and a quarter, eight and a quarter, 300. And we'll hit create. Now I'm going to go back to my main card and I will go ahead and select all which you can go to select and all or control A, copy, which is file or edit, copy, and edit, paste are under the, copy and paste, I should, I should say, are under the edit menu, but you can also use control C to copy or command C, and then go over to your canvas and control or command V and that will enter it in here. So now when I paste it onto this page, it puts it in the direct middle of my canvas. From here, I wanna go ahead and expand this card so that it fills up a large portion of the space. So we're going to go Control T. That's going to give me these little boxes that let me you know, make this bigger or smaller. And I'm going to drag them all the way to the edges. Now, I actually want this to fill up a little bit more of the space than it did there. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger even. And then when I hit the enter button, everything will come into focus. Now, the last thing I need to do is make my background the same color as the background of my card, which is black. But just in case it's not true black, I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool, pick up the color. So click on the color with my eyedropper tool, and then we'll go to my paint bucket. And then down in the right hand corner, right lower corner, we're going to select the background layer so that we are coloring now the background. And then we will paste in our black 
which looks super good. And then the last thing I want to do is merge my layers. So you can go up to layer, merge visible, or control shift and the letter E, which that basically means um, to merge all of the visible layers. So there we go. There is card or page number one, <laughs> paper number one. Okay, so let's get out of that one. And then we're going to go to spread number two for today. So for spread number two, I took this three by four card and I'm going to turn it into this traveler's notebook sized page. So what we're going to do first is again, open up that new canvas four and a quarter by eight and a quarter and create. Then we're going to come over to our card here and we're going to select it all, copy it, bring it back over to our blank canvas and paste. Then from here, we can go ahead and transform this control T to expand it all the way to the edges. And this time I only want it to go to the edges. I'm gonna hit enter and that will bring it to focus. Then I can grab it and put it all the way up at the, at the top of the page. With this layer, layer one, still selected, I want to grab my marquee tool. So this is um, one that looks like little dashed lines. It can be rectangle or any kind of shape. I usually use the rectangle or the circle. This time we're using the rectangle. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click right below. So on the outside of my page here, right below the lines that surround the word location. Then holding down my click button, I'm going to drag a box all the way to the right side and then all the way to the bottom. And it's okay even if you get a little bit of white in there. So now we've got the marching ants that are going around my selection. I will right click and then select layer via copy. Once I do that, it creates a new layer that looks only like the section that I had selected. So I can grab it and move it all the way down to the bottom to fill it in here. And then I will merge my layers, uh, which you can do with control or command shift and E, or you can come down in the layers panel and select all those layers, right click and merge layers. You know, it's just whatever method is easiest for you. Now, the other thing that I did for this card and for many of the cards that you're going to see in this album is I added in some journaling lines. I'm actually not going to fill out the journaling for this album. I'm going to let my mom fill it out as she would like. But I did want to go ahead and add in some lines to help make, it, to help make the journaling portion or the journaling process easier for her. So to do that, I came down to my shape tool. Um, which right now is on the rectangle. So there's a rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, line, and custom shape. For this one, I want to select the line tool. For my line, I have the fill set to black. So that means that my line is going to be black. My stroke is set to none because I don't need a stroke on this. And then I have my pixel set to five. So it's five pixels thick. And if you want your line thinner, you can make it less. If you want if you want it to be thicker, you can make it more. And then um, that is it. Oh, and my weight is three picks. So I am basically just going to click on here and drag a line. Now you can see that if I drag this line down, it gets all, kind of, all kinds of like crooked and janky. When you are clicked and held on, so I have clicked, I have not let go of my mouse yet. If you hit the shift button, it will force the line to stay straight. So hold down the shift button and make your line and then unclick when you are ready for it to be done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna hit the enter button and there's my first line. Now, I want to just repeat this exact same line over and over again. So I'm gonna to go to my move tool. I still have my shape um, selected over here. So I'm going to copy the shape and paste the shape and then it's going to give me another line. Then I can do that control T if I want and then it's just trying to you know, grab it and then I can move it into position wherever I want it to go. So like, let's say that looks good to me. So now I have these two lines here and now I'm actually going to select both of those lines and I'll hit control T. Why can't I do this? Oh, you know why? Because they are, um, 
Okay, so first, before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, we're gonna come down and select on our shapes, right click, and we're going to click on rasterize layers. So that's going to make them a little bit more editable. Um, I may also just go ahead and, you know, I'm not going to, we'll leave it as it is. So now we're going to copy those shapes and paste those shapes and then hit control T and that will let us adjust where they're at. So we're just going to repeat this process to create all the lines. Now, um, I do want to make sure that these are centered because they weren't before. So I selected all four of the lines, control T, and then I moved them into the center on Photoshop Creative Cloud. There will be some pink guidelines that will help you tell exactly where the middle is and then will also help you tell how far the distance is so you can keep your shapes equal distance from each other. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like Elements doesn't do that, but um, don't take my word on that. We'll eventually figure that out here. So then I've got four lines. So now I can grab all four lines and copy that and paste it. And now we get a little bit more, um, you know, <laughs> A little bit more done at a time so it can it starts out a little more difficult because you have to do individual lines but then you know you can just copy as many as you need so I'm thinking I might only need three more here control T to bring them down yep that was about right and then that looks good so now we've got this four and a quarter by eight and a quarter paper that's got journaling lines on it to fill out if I choose. Now, also you could take that big large space that I just added all those lines to and put a photo in there instead of journaling. It's just whatever you choose. Or you could just create a text box and type your journaling in from there. I just wanted to show you in case you want the journaling lines to hand write your journaling in, this is how I did it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave this up um, we'll close out of the other ones here because we don't need those anymore. But we will need this because a couple more of my projects are going to have the same lines and I'm just going to use these ones to uh, copy and paste onto the next, which you'll see here in just a second. So let's go ahead and move on to spread number three. So for spread number three, we're going to be using these, this peach colored card. So for this one, we're going to do the same thing as before, open up a new canvas, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. We're going to grab the image here. Um, so select all, copy, paste, transform, and then expand it out to the edges, move it all the way up to the top and hit enter so that it becomes clear. And then we're gonna grab the marquee tool and we're going to select from underneath the arrow all the way to the bottom right click and layer via copy. Then we're gonna grab the move tool so we can actually move it and move that all the way to the bottom. There we go. So we're going to merge those layers. So now this is all one layer and I will grab, oh, we can close out of that. I will grab my lines here. They might not be, they might be a little bit too big, but we'll find out. And we're going to paste them. Yes, they are a tiny bit too big. So I'm just going to transform and then I'm just gonna reduce the size of them slightly. Um, I can move them up to the top, which that's actually a little bit too far up to the top, maybe right there. And then for this one in particular, I um, actually am putting a photo in the bottom of this. Uh, my photo is, let's find out. I don't remember, uh, is roughly like, three and a half by four and a half. It's a little bit less than that, maybe three and a quarter by four and a half. So let's just grab a shape tool again. Let's do the rectangle with a black fill. We're gonna just click into the middle and I will put in, um, what I said, 3.25 inches by 4.5 inches. It was something like that. And then we can move, whoop, definitely not. <laughs> that is definitely not what it was. So maybe we'll do like a three, 0.25 by 3.25. We'll just make it a straight up square. And then we can move that here into the middle. So now I can have a photo in there and my journaling up on the top. Um, this could work as a layer template. So you could go ahead and put a photo on here and clip the photo inside of the box, uh, which makes you know photo sizing a little bit easier to figure out when you're working in projects like this. Um, but aside from that, you can also just take all of this out. You can click off of that. So it would basically be like 
something like that. And then I would save this and this would be my traveler's notebook page. So that was for spread number three. Um, and you can see here how it, how it turns out or how I'm planning for it to turn out. Okay, so the last one I've got for today, spread number four, is using the same card in a different color. So we're gonna do the same thing, open up a new canvas, four and a quarter, eight and a quarter, copy the card we like, paste it, transform it in order to get it to fill up the whole page. Hit the enter button to clear it up, marquee and select our section. Right click, layer via copy. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And then we're going to grab the move tool, if I can find it, there we go. And we're going to move that section down to the bottom and then go ahead and um, merge those layers. And then for this one, I did the same thing as before where I just took you know, like the lines here, we're going to copy it, we'll paste it. They're a little bit um, too big, so we'll shrink those down a bit, put them in to wherever I want them to go, select off. Um, I believe there are lines there, we just can't see them. Yep. Sometimes um, the screen plays, plays an effect, like there is a line here and there is a line here, it's just not showing it right now. And then we're going to go ahead and select maybe like these lines right here, copy and paste, transform, and then we move that down to where we want it to go. And I think I actually have one line too many. So then this bottom line, I might just get rid of that. And then that would be this journaling card. So again, if I zoom in, you'll see all the lines are in there. Um, and that's going to be spread number four. So with that, I am going to go ahead and uh, head back over to the craft table, and then we'll go ahead and get these first four spreads put together physically inside of the traveler's notebook. All right, so now we're back over at my craft table where we can go ahead and get started working on the physical album. So the first thing I'm going to do with this traveler's notebook is to actually take the staples out so I can work on the pages loose. I really like to do this, especially when I'm working on an album that has a like a clear beginning and end to it an, an album such as a travel album like this one so I take all those pages out and then I can just use them one at a time and it helps me to cut down on the bulk but then also to make sure that everything is nice and even in the book when um, we get it reassembled here at the end so for my title page, one of the things I really like to do with my travel albums is to purchase the state stamps or country stamps, but state stamps from Studio Calico, and then to stamp out the outline of... Um, of the state on the front cover along with the name of the state and then the dates that uh, the trip you know happened from so the beginning date and the end date so that's what I'm going to do here this trip was one that my parents took to Montana so I did pick up the Montana state stamp who knows also by the way maybe one day I will own all of the state stamps how cool would that be um, but that is just a side note so I went ahead and stamped out that using my scrapbook.com premium black dye ink. And then I've got the title here that says Montana. I also will pull off this little icon of mountains that I thought was really kind of appropriate for the trip that they took. There are a bunch of photos from the mountains. So I'm going to grab that and stamp it right above the Montana word. And then I will grab my roller date stamp and just stamp the dates underneath the state there. So that just signifies the dates of this particular trip. Now, when my parents went to Montana, they went there with um, my aunt and uncle. Um, so I have an uncle who lives in Montana. He and his wife, um, my uncle's actually only a couple years older than me. So he and his wife have a son that is, I believe he's a a year younger than Isabella. Um, so it's, it's fun. Like my mom gets to go out and visit and... Um, occasionally and and I've been out to visit visit occasionally I'd love to get back out there again soon um but on their way to Montana this time my aunt and my uncle who live in the same state as us uh, and my grandpa all went with my parents they stopped first in Chicago 
and spent, I don't know if it was just one night there or if it was a couple of nights. And they also went to a football game for the Lions versus the Chicago Bears. So um, that's going to be what these first couple of spreads will be about. So for this one, I've got a picture of the Chicago cityscape there over the river. I pulled out this ephemera piece from the die cut pack that I super love. It says adventure starts here, which I thought was really appropriate since this was the beginning of the trip. But the other thing that I love about it is that it has these gray tones with a pop of yellow and the black writing, which is awesome because the cityscape has black with like the grayish white of the lights. And then there's yellow, a pop of yellow in that as well. I'm pairing this with the quote card that we turned into a traveler's notebook page, and then I grabbed one more ephemera piece there um, to include at the top. Now, for this very first spread, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how I put this in the album, and then I'm going to skip over this process for the entire rest of the spreads, because I figure you don't need to see this a million times. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn them over. I have a 1 4th inch score tape. I also use 1 8th inch sometimes, but this time I use the 4th inch. And I put that around the perimeter of the photo. Then I can take off the release tape or the backing of that tape and then I'm going to line it up with the center of my page here but I'm not going all the way to the center I'm leaving like a little sliver of white there at the edge the reason I'm doing that is because when I go to stitch this together later I don't want to be poking through multiple lever lovers multiple layers of paper. I want it to just be the white spine of all of the pages and, you know, the, the cover as well. So uh, it's also going to help it close. So when you bend those pages together, it's going to close a lot easier if you don't have anything obstructing the hinge. Whereas if I were to put it all the way to the center, then those papers could crush each other in the middle. So just as a heads up on that. So once I have the first one in there, then I can grab out my next paper. For this one, I need this to go on the top flap. Um, so it's just kind of finagling the pages to work for me um, and just remembering to like I will put the whole book back together and then I'll pull out the pages that I need that way I don't get turned around on what pages I'm working on and so forth once I have everything stuck down there is a little bit of a hangover on the three outer edges so I do just trim that off a little bit before putting it back in the book so there we go with spread number one so now I'm going to flip the page. So see how I can, how I put everything back together, flip it to the next page and set that aside. And then I will start working on spread number two. So for this one, this is going to be fairly easy. The uh, journaling side on the left, I'm going to put in just as is. I'm not going to add anything to it. On the right side of the page, I'm looking through my die cuts to see if there's anything I want to add to these two photos. So I have one of my parents with the city behind them. And I have another photo there, which is um, a mural on a popcorn store that we always visit whenever we go to Chicago. It's Garrett's Popcorn. It is the best, the best popcorn. Um, and always has like this huge line to get it. So my parents snapped a picture of the mural as a reminder that they went to the Garrett Popcorn Store and then, um, you know, also for their time here in Chicago. So I found a couple of pieces that I like and I'm just playing around with different configurations and different placements. I'm having a hard time deciding because I don't want to cover up too much of the photo. And then I start to think, well, wait a second, why don't I pull these alphabet stickers over and write out the word Chicago on the photo of my parents. So I'm going to, um, in a second here, I will grab over my ruler and stick some of those alphabet stickers onto the ruler in order to get them positioned and just make sure that it works out the way I want it to. Then for the ephemera pieces, I decide to go with this, um, oh, it's like a, a pinkish 
salmon. And I think it says uh, having the best time on it. It's hard to read it right now. And then I also have the little tiny world symbol. So I'm just layering those up and putting them on the photo. The thing I like about that particular die cut, the uh, one that says having the best time, I like that it has that white border around the outside of it because it allows you to actually see the die cut. I was having a hard time with the red one earlier because I felt like it just blended in a little too much. So now that I have the Chicago word spelled out there on my ruler, the next thing I'm doing is just adding it to the bottom of this photo of my parents. So I picked the very middle alphabet uh, or very middle middle letter in the word and started there. So I grabbed that and stuck that down into the middle bottom of the photo and then I'm building out to the edges from there and that just lets everything stay in a nice line and also make sure that everything is um, aligned where I want it to be. So next I just need to add a little bit of adhesive onto the die cut pieces here. And then once I have that done, we can go ahead and start getting everything backed. Oh, I do grab one extra little puffy sticker here. It's this tiny arrow that points, I'm pointing it back towards the city. So it's kind of like Chicago is right there. So we'll turn everything over. I'm going to add my score tape onto the back of it. And then um, this page will stick on the left side there. And then these two photos I'm going to stick down on the right side. Now these I'm deciding not to put any paper behind them. I'm just going to stick them directly onto the white page here. I uh, make sure that they are lined up the way I like them first and then I will stick them down. That way I can keep the border around those photos as even as possible. It works out pretty nicely to do it this way. I also debated rounding the corners on those photos. I really, I don't love rounded corners, so I decided against it, but that could totally be something, you know, you could do in a book like this as well. So there is spread number two. Now moving on to the next one. This one is the, uh, I'm trying to think if I have one or two. I think I only have one spread that's about the Bears versus the Lions game. I really loved this die cut that says here. Um, and what does it say? You so very happy. Here, so very happy is what it says. The reason I love this die cut so much is number one, first of all, I love the big word die cuts that come in the future craft packs like this. There were some in the last year's travel album too, and I just, they are my favorite by far. But also, I love that the die cut is blue, and it's a light blue, which really helps to pull the blue colors that my dad is wearing. Uh, my parents are Lions fans. They go to the Lions football games. Um, I think they are season, well, normally they're season ticket holders, but you know, since COVID and everything, that is... Um, I don't think that's the case right now, but typically they go to a bunch of the Lions games every year and um, they try to make it to one or two away games as well. So this was one of their away games. So the here, the blue of the here brings in the color of my dad's hat. And I was thinking about it too with the um, that speech bubble one that was a darker blue, but I ended up going with the here word instead because I felt like it was a little bit more... Um, cohesive, I suppose, with the spread as a whole. I'm just debating, you know, do I want to layer anything with it and um, playing with a bunch of different ones here. I ultimately decide to stick this location one underneath. I'm not filling any of this out, so I'm just going to leave the location um, label blank as well so my mom can fill that one in too. But I'm going to layer it right underneath the word and I think that that looks pretty nice. It also helps to bring in some of those pink red tones from the journaling card on the right side. So it helps it to not look so dissociated from each other by having one side be a lot of blue and the other side be a lot of those warmer colors. So I think that that helps. For the right side of this spread, I am sticking this, um, it says good times label here, or it's a, a die cut onto the photo and then um, adding some adhesive onto the back of the photo and sticking that down into the square, that empty portion where I had designed for that photo to go.
And that's just a photo of the football field that my parents had taken or my mom had taken. And then I am going to, bait, to debate if I want to add any puffy stickers on here. And I will ultimately decide to use three of these puffy stars. I love the Future Craft puffy stickers. They are probably hands down my favorite of all the puffy sticker makers out there. I love how vibrant the colors are and I love that Elise makes them in so many different shape varieties. So in that one set you have diamonds and you have triangles and you have plus signs and you have stars and you have flowers. So like all different kinds. I just love them. That set, by the way, is the uh, shapes number three and there are a couple other ones as well in the shop. So moving on to our last spread for today, this one I am documenting, um, they have finally gotten to Montana at this point in time, and I should say that they traveled there in November, so it was very cold and snowy at the time, so they went with my uncle um, and his wife and their son to the sledding hill. So this is a bunch of pictures from all of them sledding. Um, at wherever that location was. So I grabbed a stamp set that says um, ready for adventure and I'm stamping that in my scrapbook.com premium black dye ink at the top of the card there. I like how that little section seems pretty well suited to having a title stamped in there. And then I'm pretty much going to leave this um, blank except for I will add two additional puffy stickers on either side of that title, these little blue arrows. And for this kit, I will say in the traveler's notebook i will be using a bunch of blue tones because with the snow snow has a very bluish tone already so um because there are so many blue toned photos i go with a lot of the blue toned embellishments and cards and sentiments as well so i went ahead and got that one added into the book um same way as before with the score tape and sticking it in and trimming off the edges. And then for the opposite side, I went ahead and cut apart all of those photos. Now you could leave something like that together and just let the space be the same photo paper. But for me, I really like the texture of having everything cut apart. And then what I decided was I would put these onto some kind of pattern paper. So I have a selection of uh, Traveler's Notebook sized pattern papers. And I'm looking through here at maybe one that's got a yellow tone or one that's got a green tone, just trying to find something that's going to work. I come across this one right here, which is a white with green lines grid. And the reason I chose it is because in the blue journaling card, the topographical map lines are all done in the same color green. So I felt like it would tie the two pages together pretty nicely. So I got that one there on the page. I figured that it would be easier for me to put it on the page first and then to add my photos after that. And then I'm just going to see how I want to get this page embellished. So I am thinking about bringing out some of my stamps and then I'm also looking through that die cut pack to see if anything seems suitable for these photos. The stamp set that I like a lot as it pertains to this particular spread is the one that's a circle and it looks kind of like a compass. I don't remember what it says around it. Something, I think something about exploring or about adventuring. And it just seemed kind of appropriate for the theme of this page. And then I also pulled out two of these really deep green embellishments as well. So one of them says, whoa, which I thought was kind of um, a clever sentiment for for sledding. And then I have another one that says trip highlight and it's a banner. So I am placing those on there to see, you know, do I want to add these on here? And I will actually add them both, but not where I had them originally. First, I want to grab the stamps that I want to put on here. I have two of them. So the first one I picked, I'm actually going to stamp in my Brilliance Moon White, Moonlight white ink, um, which has kind of an iridescent shine to it. So uh, it's not it's not matte necessarily. It It's kind of 
it just has a shine to it. But the nice thing about it is that you can see it pretty well on the photos, especially when you stamp them in a darker section. And then I do decide to go ahead and stamp this compass looking stamp on the largest photo on the spread and then I will layer up a couple other embellishments with that stamp set as well so that it doesn't look like it's just floating there in the middle of nowhere for no reason. So I will stick those back here on the spread so we can see what you know what do I want to do here how do I want to uh, embellish the rest of this. I end up adding the woe banner to this photo here in the middle left and then I will also add the banner to the bottom. And I believe I'm also going to grab maybe an arrow, some other kind of puffy sticker that is fairly small to go in between the banner and the um, circle there. I think I'm going to get, yes, one of these circle ones. And I chose the blue there to help tie in the color from the left side of the page. So once I have all of this ready to go, the last thing I need to do is get everything adhered down. So since I've already got the paper itself adhered down with the really strong score tape, the photos themselves, I'm just going to use my roller adhesive. I'm not too worried about those falling off. I just like to have the paper that's inside of these books really strongly held down, um, especially since there's going to be some give and, and bend to the pages. I think that it, you know, that helps with that. To help me get these positioned just right, I am adding my adhesive on there and putting them into position, but not necessarily pushing it all the way down um, because I want to be able to still move them if I need to, like I did right here. And then once I have that into a place that I like, I'll go ahead and press down on the whole photo. Um, I did go ahead and position the right side of the spread first, and then when I do the left side of the spread, it's much easier to get everything aligned exactly where I want it to go. Once I have all of these stuck down, um, I'm, I'll put the book back together here, and then we're going to call these four layouts done for today. All right, friends, that completes the first four spreads in this travel album. So we've got the title page. We've got this large, just quote kind of page with a scenery photo, um, the page about Chicago, the football game spread, and then the sledding spread. So that is four out of the 16. I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing these spreads come together. And I also hope that the computer portion showing you how to turn these digital elements into sizes that work for you, I hope that those were helpful. If you did enjoy these, these spreads, this video, I would love a thumbs up down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos as well. I'll be back later in the week or later in the month with the next set of four spreads and then um, there'll be two videos after that. So a total of four videos of this album. So I hope that I will see you back here then. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend of your week and I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> Bye friends.